And from Basmadon, ladies and gentlemen, with a record of 23 wins and one draw, undefeated, the light welterweight champion of the world, Terry Marsh. At the weigh-in today, both boxers scaled 10 stones exactly. The officials for this contest, ladies and gentlemen, judges from the USA, Joe Pascal, from Denmark, Ove Oberson, from England, Roland Dakin, the referee from the USA, Mr. Randy Newman, and the IBF supervisor from the USA, Mr. Walter Stone. Referee for this contest is Mr. Timekeeper, Mr. Ray Rice. So there's the man actually who refereed uh, the last time for Terry Marsh, Randy Newman, former heavyweight, who boxed in this country, defeated Billy Ed. So there's the, the rundown on the height there. They, they're both the same height. That does surprise me. I thought uh, Kamida was a little bit more, actually, but there you go. So the height shouldn't be that much of an advantage, but the right-hand forward southpaw style, well, that just might schedule. For 15 rounds, the old-fashioned distance, as we call it, at 10 stone, that's between lightweight and welterweight, that's the light welter, or the junior welterweight, that's known as as well, but I don't like that chant, that title, it sounds like they're two kids, in fact, they're 29 and 30 years old. So now let's see how Terry Marsh is going to cope with uh, a very awkward style, I get the impression, I've only seen videos of Kamida, I haven't seen him in the flesh, during the playing of the anthems. Terry Marsh is jogging the whole time and staring at the challenger. He's really total concentration. And I have to say, the Royal Albert Hall atmosphere is buzzing here for this championship. They're already into songs. first minute then the, the path finding as it were over and it looks as though uh, Marsh is going to play a bit of a chess game at the start and, uh, remember he was a junior chess champion but it's a bit difficult with gloves on he's been a bit prone to cuts in, uh, in his time apparently the Japanese so I'm not sure what, no, what a good punch there. he turned that left he's got to be a lead and he switched it to an uppercut Marsh going to be one of Marsh's many thinking fights, Jim, I suspect. Yeah, well, Marsh has had no trouble whatsoever landing punches in the first round anyway. I thought it may have taken him a few rounds with a southpaw stance to solve him out. But uh, Kamida doesn't move as sharply as I expected. And uh, his chin is actually a bit stationary. Terry's been finding it without really trying with some nice little crisp jabs. He's a bit of a willing fighter, Kamida, my uh, Japanese boxing informants say. that he'll stand there and trade sometimes to his detriment, but he does it. It's, he hasn't been active enough for me to uh, be a... Well, he's a serious threat. All challenges are serious threats. They've got so much to win and little to lose. The thing about uh, Terry Marsh now, we know he's proved his durability. He's only taken one very short count early in his career, only his fourth fight down in South End. So then there's the countdown for the end of the first, for the, the scouting reports are over now as far as the, the old Marine's concerned, I'm sure. We know now what he's got, how he's got to deal with this Japanese. And there's a the rundown for the world champion, one of your genuine East Enders actually born in Stepney, now living in Basildon and... Uh, serving with the fire force in Tilbury most of the time there.
and Kamida then is a year older and he fought for the world championship against one of the great fighters who's rather sadly gone off the scene now Aaron Pryor uh, which uh, he was stopped and wasn't unexpected really he took a few counts as well and the only the only other two losses were against the same guy and that was in Korea where you know they use that old expression about you've got to knock them out there to get a draw but they were both cut you've got to knock them out there to get a draw but they were both cuts so uh, we don't pay too much attention to those losses We're into round two. Good confident round, I thought, there by Marsh, Jim. Yeah, Ben Marsh certainly got the better of things. The Kamida didn't really show us anything at all. Uh, none of his own work had any sharpness about it. And even now, there goes Marsh's jab, knocking his head back. It looks as though it's far easier to hit Kamida than uh, with first fear. Keeping in mind it is a 15 rounder, so it's quite possible Kamida was just uh, having a little look in the first round. I'm, I'm obviously sure he must have a lot more to, to show than he did show in the first round. Well, 30 can be a great divide in the fight game for boxers at this rate. And that's uh, Kamida's age. And it's about 20 years since the Japanese was in this ring challenging for the World Championship against Howard Winston. And that was stopped on, uh, on a cut officially, but the ring got invaded as well. And the, the referee for that, Ronan Daking, is actually one of the appointed judges here. Oh, he keeps doing that. That's a, a very cocky punch, Jim, isn't it? Sort of a left-hand uppercut. It's a way to beat the southpaw, and you being an ex-southpaw. Yeah, well, the, the best thing is to get outside the... Uh... Southpaw's jab and come over the top of his jab with your own and Marsh has been doing that seemingly effortlessly Warning there to keep punches up But that really is uh, a peach of a punch if they say <laughs> Difficult to stop I think Marsh has cut over the right eye Reg see a smear of blood oh, he shot that right hand in there which is a sign that if he is cut he knows he's got to do something about it yes he is cut over the right eye Jim you're right to confirm that I was just talking about his concentration at that point but he must have got caught as they ran in might have been a bit of a head clash going there I certainly didn't see a punch doing it he has been cut before by the way Marsh and he's got uh, experienced men in the corner but this early in a 15 rounder he's going to need all the help he can get for two rounds now to uh, staunch that a bit half a minute to go in the second <laughs> uses that right hand well now the world champion and he's got to It's the accuracy now of Marsh's punches that are counting. He might not claim to be the heaviest puncher of all, but he's accurate. That's what it's about. Make him count. Well, Jim, now there they are, working hard on that uh, Ernie Fossey. Lots of pressure now. When you, when you fellas are in the corner there, there's, there's the analysis on the cuts, as I was saying four times Marsh in previous fights and come back to win um, Kamida's been cut but then again he isn't at this point now the only guy in the place who doesn't know how bad it is uh, Jim he's, I think Randy Newman now is the, the referee has looked down I'm not sure whether he's going to call the doctor up to uh, give him advice on it no he's just walking back over to uh, the Japanese corner is the only one who doesn't know what kind of cut that is. Does that bother a boxer at this stage in a world championship? Well, obviously in a 15 rounder and it's bleeding already Reg. in a 15 rounder it's a, it's a terrible worry for Marsh. But I don't know how it could happen because Kamida hasn't really had offered anything at all. He hasn't seemed to throw any worthwhile punches. It must have been a clash of heads. 
because he's done nothing right so far, but this must have given him the, the lift he badly needed. Jim, I think there's a second cut just happened, and it's just alongside it. It looks like it looks like a cut, another cut nearer the nose, just the top of Marsh's nose. That Marsh is going to have to open out. No way can this fight go more than three or four rounds with Marsh so badly cut. He's going to have to give it all he has and go for a knockout here. I know they're very concerned. I've just had word from the seconds in Marcy's corner there. They're very concerned. And indeed, we all are, because it, it must have been a head clash to have done it like that so quickly. Well, what drama this is in the World Championship. Right? What a tragedy it's going to be for Marcy to be beaten by a cut like that to lose an unbeaten record and worse the world championship over it. I don't know whether the referee will decide it's a deliberate butt at all. He can't have done because he didn't uh, warn the Japanese early on. Low punches he's warning uh, for, that's fair enough. But, uh, that's a lot less dangerous than... Randy Newman, the referee now, is uh, an old fighter who knows what the score is, Jim. He's had a look between rounds. He's not going to nag Marsh too much and keep looking at it all the time. Good refereeing. But this would be a tragedy if Marsh lost his title to Kamida Nakarai because Kamida doesn't look in the same class as Marsh. He's not in the same league. He's done absolutely nothing right. I don't know how he's managed to cut Marsh so badly. It must have been clashes of heads because he hasn't even thrown really any worthwhile punches. See, while he's getting well on top like this, he's got to get all the help he, he can get from the referee. He won't panic and get in there and stop it. I admire Marsh for getting on with it because he knows he's got to have a little bit of desperation in there. In the third round, and the crowd are certainly willing him. It's hard to believe that his mask so badly cut, Kamida's actually going to the body. Kamida's last three or four punches have been to the body. He's not actually, it's as though he's apologetic about having cut mask. Then he goes to the body again, look. Yeah, but the, the head's roughing in as well there, Jim. That's worse for Marsh. He can take the punches to the body all night. Now, those seconds have dived in that ring there. They got the one in a thousand adrenaline out to staunch this blood. So Randy Newman now just going over there, he is uh, having a check. He just may have to call a doctor. No, he's going to collect the judges' cards instead. They point up the end of each round, around there to Marsh. Now, Jim, in the previous round, uh, this could well be the replay of how the heads came together. See, see what you think. Yes. Yeah, definitely. A definite clash. If it's accidental, of course, it wasn't a deliberate, but that was definitely bad enough to cause a cut. Well, it gets a tough old business when you get when you really get to the top and this happens. But knowing Marsh's grit, providing he can just stay away enough and not get in rough there, he could still stop this man. As Jim Watt said, he's he looks a league above this. Kamida actually doesn't look very strong at ten stone. Now that's the way to come out fighting now. Well, first time of the sponsorship there with the natural vitality people. So, uh, all the swimming pills and things, they say that he's got a slow heartbeat uh, marsh which allows him to have more energy normally than his opponents and throw more punches. So now let's hope the pills work. Pizzi. The people in the boxes at the top of the Royal Albert Hall really can see that one from a long way off coming in and get the big cheers going in. And what an audience he's got here tonight, Terry Marsh now. Hector Camacho and the great Sugar Ray Leonard with us at ringside. See, the 
referee's not allowing them to linger too much in close quarters there. He's certainly doing Marshall a favour, parting them quickly. Jimmy can still do it. He's, he's holding up well that... Uh, of course he can still do it, yeah, because Kamida, as I said, is not in Marshall's league. He, he's really not had, really had anything worthwhile to offer from the start of the fight. He doesn't seem strong. He doesn't seem to have any technique. The only thing that's keeping him in the fight is the cut over... The, or probably two cuts over Marcy's right eye. But even now, he's not even attacking the injury. He's still... Marcy's been pushing him back all the way. If Marcy keeps this going, then we must look for a stoppage victory. I like that. I like the waving to somebody at the ringside there, Marsh. What a character. In all the trouble in the world, he's got time to think. I tell you, Jim, the, the tension's absolutely unbearable now here at ringside, isn't it? Can he do it? Well, the fact that he's got such a control on the fight, the referee can't be thinking of getting him out of there. If Mars was taking punny, punches and Kamida was in the fight, then we could maybe fear the referee pulling him out of there. But Mars is dictating the action so much, Kamida is not in the fight. So let's have a word with the, the great flamboyant lightweight champion, Hector Macho Man Camacho, with Jim Rosenthal. Hector, what have you made of it so far? I like what I see. <laughs> He's everything I thought he was. And it looks good for me, OK? He's looking good, not great, because this guy would have blew him out a long time ago. He made a little sign to you, Terry Marsh, there. Did you catch that at ringside? I call it. There's nothing I could do with it. <laughs> you know, it's his show, you know, but I'm here. But what do you feel? Do you think he's going to win despite that cut? Uh, he should be able because he's more malicious, you know, than, this, uh, than, this, Japanese. than the Japanese guy. I'm, here, I'm helping he win, but if not, go always take a trip to Japan. <laughs> Hector, thanks a lot. So, the Macho Man are now into round five. Obviously, that's the fight that Terry Marsh is looking for, a real bonanza with the lightweight champion who actually they've just stripped him of that, but uh, he's still unbeaten, Hector Camacho and won two world titles and now wants to go for his third and secretly I think he's rooting a bit for Marsh it's more money for him it's good to have a, a solid referee in there Jim who's certainly not panicking or making mistakes that's the reason I like to see ex-fighters as referees because cuts don't frighten them uh, Newman probably cut a few times himself, but he's left Marsh all the way through this to go on with the job, and Marsh is doing a first-class job. Camilla has been right out of this fight for the last two or three rounds. That left hand, there he goes again, watch for that, that uppercut. A very difficult punch to throw, as professionals will tell you. But he's, he's a game enough guy, this Japanese guy. He's maybe limited in ability, ability Jim, but uh, he stands in there, don't mind pitching punches back when he can. He doesn't seem to have any strength or snap legs. He seems as though doing 10 stone has been a problem to him because he's never been able to, to match Marsh at all at close quarters, long range or anything. And at the end of the last round, he almost collapsed onto his stool, yet it's Marsh who's doing all the work. Marsh is the man who should be breathing heavily. Yeah, we've got macho mans and marsho mans here tonight. Oh, that long right hand sunk in. He's going to drop this challenger. A series of punches with Marsh. He doesn't necessarily look for the one. He'll throw a whole fusillade at him. Not that it matters now, but he's got a bruising around the right eye now, Comida, but uh, that certainly won't bother him. With a minute to go in the fifth. Is scheduled for 15. So there's the soccer style chance for Marsh. Marsh. As you 
his agent. He's, he's definitely looking tired as well, Camille, and he's the one who should have been full of running at this stage. He's actually looked exhausted all the way through the fight. He's never had any snap or life about him, but we certainly can't, uh, we can't doubt his courage because he's taken some cracking punches from Mars. I think if Mars just had that little couple of ounces more power, Camille would be out of there, but I think it's on its way. Tell you what, though, Jim, that's when the old chips are down and you're badly cut like that, that's when you show your fighting class, isn't it? Oh, well, we never doubted Marsh's his will to win his desire. He, he showed that against Manley. So they are in Marsh's corner, and what a, what a job they've all got to do in there. It's uh, Fossey who's actually working harder there, and the other two just taking care of the rest of the... There has to be a bit of a teamwork going in there. But I would think if, if, if you had a fighter that was going to get cut, Jim, the fellow with Marsh's sort of reaction and mentality, he's the sort you want. Yeah, Marsh has the, the perfect temperament there. He knows everything that's going on. He, th he thinks things out. He never flaps, never panics. He realised that being cut so early, he had to take hold of the fight, and he's completely dictated the action since uh, the, the first sign of blood on his eye. Boxing border control, we've got inspectors in the corner. You might see them now just getting out of the ring on the aprons there, just making sure no illegal substances are used because, as far as I know, nobody bothers to do that anymore. Round six. And Jim Watt and I both think now that if Mars can just keep that flow of punches going now, as he did when he won the championship against the American Joe Louis Manley, that he can stop this Japanese challenger. Seems that Marsh's corner men are well pleased with uh, how they've managed to be able to patch that up and that Marsh has not complained at all. And they think their man now is well on his way to win. Now, this is the time, Jim, when uh, Marsh has really got to make the punches. Accurate, make everyone count now. Yeah, well, I don't think Terry has to worry too much because he knows he has the stamina. And obviously, looking at Kamida, no way can he match him for stamina or anything else. Marsh is that can actually forget about the cuts because he's dictating the action so much. It's all one way traffic, so Marsh probably is not even thinking about the injuries on his eye. Almost got trapped his foot in the, the rope there, Kamida. I tell you, the heavyweight referee will finish up the middleweight, Jim. He's working hard and for sparring like a good one. Yes, look at this. He's, no, he's really putting, it up, putting on a show now, Mark, isn't he? He's trying to turn it into an exhibition. He's showing a bit of contempt for him as well, now, Jim. Yeah, well, he's entitled to because Kamida hasn't got the power or the strength to bother him in the slightest. Marsh, believe it or not, he's actually enjoying himself. The worry of the cut is gone. That was more of a, a slip nope. from tiredness, I think, Rich. Right? Yeah, he's going to give him a mandatory eight there, and the Japanese definitely objected to that when he went down and said that was a slip. I agree with you. Three knockdowns in a round does not count under the IBF rules. It could be one knockdown, two, or even four if necessary. It's the referee's discretion. Now, it's definitely a question of uh, time, and when I say time, a round or two at the most, I would think for Marsh now because he's just wearing this fellow down now, the war of attrition, and he's winning at the old Marine. So after that action then, it's a break for the boxers and a quick break for us, but we'll be right back. Well, what a sensation that was. Just as we went to that break there, Kamida fell on the ropes, he had to literally be hauled back in the corner, and when he got back to his stool, they took nearly the whole of the minute in that round to decide, 
that he wasn't going to come out after the end of the six and nobody knew it better than this man Terry Marsh and uh, border control doctors there are in the ring he just completely ran out of gas as Jim Watt and I were saying it was only a question of when but we were surprised and I think Marsh was too uh, when he sort of collapsed on the ropes he went back to a neutral corner and then had to be pulled back and that was it well there you are through that damage there it's almost a a T-shaped cut there and could lose a lot of fights over that. So the brass bands are playing there as he raises the IBF belt and he'll be looking for the big one now hopefully against Hector the Macho Man Camacho although there is a nominated challenger called Frankie Warren nothing to do with the, the promoter who is the number one contender as well Land of Hope and Glory and this this fellow Terry Marsh is the best flag waver in the country at the moment. 